five, four, three, two. Realtors, you're in the right spot. We're going to do this together. Welcome to the Leading Edge Podcast. These mentors showed me a map of success. This is the place for real estate pros like you to get better at running your business, balancing your life, and having happy clients. Do you know how powerful you are? And now your host, Eric Thompson. What's up, everyone? It's your good friend, Eric Thompson, on the Leading Edge podcast, episode number 83. You guys, this one is called Discomfort is the Currency, all right? So I'm going to tell you why it's called that. But first, I want to say thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for engaging with this podcast. Life is pretty darn good. In the Thompson household, I'm recording this in the middle of ski season, You probably know by now that the Thompsons like to ski. We've been skiing a lot together. Uh, Business is fantastic. Really having so, so much fun. Really more fun than I've ever had. And life is good. I hope life is awesome for all of you. We actually just got back from a little ski weekend at Copper Mountain. How many of you have ever been to Copper Mountain in Colorado? It's a beautiful, beautiful resort right off of Interstate 70. Really convenient. Great spot. Spent the weekend there and just had a ball. So again, I hope life is good uh, for all of you. All right, you guys, here's the thing. Again, this is called Discomfort is the Currency. I will explain to you why I'm calling it that here in a second, but I first want to tell you the story of what inspired this podcast. So on our way home from Copper Mountain, our little uh, ski weekend, me and the girls, me and the family, Me and Team Blonde, my wife and my two amazing kids, on our way home, Julie and I, my wife and I, decided to have a fun little conversation all about what is it that we want to do before our kids graduate. So our kids right now, as I'm recording this, they are 13 and 11, and we were talking about, wow, you know, time is short. And certainly it's not like we're never going to see them again after they graduate, but we're not going to see them as much. So we said, all right, what do we want to do? And Julie gets credit for really having this idea and having this fun little plan where what we did is we mapped out the remaining summers and the remaining winters before they graduate. And we just said, okay, where are all the cool things that that we would want to do before they graduate? Let's just create a dream list. And we came up with a dream list. And then what we did is we started to put those dreams into certain time frames, all right? So we said, okay, here's something we want to do. By the way, we've, we love to ski. We've always wanted to ski in Europe. So that was something on the list. And so we said, okay, when, when would it be possible? When, when would be a good time to do that? Let's drop that into the schedule, all right? So just to give you an idea. And by the way, I, from my perspective, these are all exciting things, but also completely doable, completely possible. I didn't feel like we were like, ridiculous ridiculously over the top with anything and like we didn't write down like buy a Rolls Royce or you know anything dumb like that these are all exciting things for us but also really possible really doable I didn't feel like they're over the top so we created this list or we created this game plan and I'm like that's exciting and it also it feels very possible for us to do that and then of course where my head went next is okay it's going to take some money all right, it's going to take some dollars to do all these things to accomplish these dreams, which is totally fine. I mean, that's to be expected. And I'm kind of doing the math in my head um, and I'm thinking it through. And what I, where I arrived in my brain was, OK, so for us to do this, for me, for me to achieve that, for me to um, create that income, really what it's going to come down to is discomfort. <laughs> OK. And it's going to come down to the question of how uncomfortable am I willing to get? Because I know for me to go create the income that's required to go do that, again, it's not crazy. It's not overly extravagant, I don't think. But it's going to take some money. In my head, I'm like, okay, for me to do that, for me to go generate that extra income for us to have those dreams come true, again, it will come down to how uncomfortable am I willing to get? How much discomfort am I willing to experience? And the thing is, that question is true for any entrepreneur. I mean, any entrepreneur, including all of my realtor friends who engage with this podcast, any entrepreneur, certainly any realtor, I mean, really, 
the, the things you want to do, the things you want to achieve, it's going to come down to how uncomfortable are you willing to get? And in a few minutes, I'm going to give you a very specific example. And it's also true, not only, I think, not only for entrepreneurs, but it's also true for people who may be an employee. You know, if you're not a, if you're not a 1099 person, if you're more of a W-2 kind of person, you earning more money, it's also will come down to discomfort because going in to ask your manager, your boss for a raise, I mean, that's, that's uncomfortable. Um, thinking through ways to create even more value within your company, within your organization, that's uncomfortable uh, for you to like really think that through and push yourself and expand and grow and evolve. That's all that all includes discomfort. So for sure, for entrepreneurs, for sure. And I would also argue also for employees. All right, let's think about this metaphor uh, related to the title of, the, of this podcast, where I'm saying that discomfort is the currency. Discomfort is the currency toward your dreams. All right. So discomfort is the currency toward your dreams. And what I mean by that is this, and let, let's kind of play out this metaphor. Imagine paying for something, all right? So if you have currency, then you're going to pay for something. Let's really think that, th- think that through. Let's imagine that. And when you pay for something, when you give someone money, I mean, there is a little bit of discomfort that's involved. But what you know is the thing you're getting back outweighs the discomfort, all right? So you're you're excited about the thing that you're getting back or, or you know that it's filling a need that you have, like if it's food, <laughs> right? So there is a little discomfort, you know, when you see the grocery store bill, when you're, when you're checking out the grocery store and you, you see all that money that it's racked up to be, especially these days where prices are going up, there, there is discomfort, but you overcome that discomfort by knowing that you're going to get something back. So whether it be something like food or whether it be something exciting, like, I don't know, a new pair of shoes or a new shirt or a new jacket, anything like that, you you know, you're going to get something back. And so <clears throat> you expend and, uh, and you experience a little bit of discomfort as you pay, but then what you get back is beneficial is, is the bottom line. So I think another metaphor to make this point would be exercise, right? Is there discomfort with exercise? For sure. But is there a benefit back that's usually better than the discomfort? Yes, for sure, right? So you go through some discomfort while you're exercising, but the benefit you get back is massive. It's huge. It's There's such a big payoff with that, right? So you are viewing discomfort as currency. You're, gonna, you're willing to pay out, willing to experience some discomfort to get a benefit back. All right. So that that's how this metaphor works. And ultimately, here's the question for you. Here is the question. How much discomfort are you willing to experience? How much discomfort are you willing to go through? How much discomfort are you willing to go create (laughs) on purpose, like intentionally, so that you can go achieve your dreams? And really, you guys, it comes down to that. And when you hit a point uh, where you're saying, I'm not willing to experience that discomfort, well, guess what? You're not, you're not going to get the payoff, right? If you're not willing to experience the, com- the discomfort of exercise, you're not going to get the payoff from exercise. Now, let me be clear. Let me be totally clear. I'm not suggesting that you go risk your life, <laughs> okay? I'm also not suggesting at all that you like go risk your reputation, all right? I'm not, go- I'm not suggesting that you go... Uh, and go and do something that's so over the top and so outside of who you are and and, and uh, what's what's right and reasonable and, and tasteful and, right? and all, all those things. I'm not at all suggesting that, <clears throat> that you would risk your reputation. But you guys, but how uncomfortable are you willing to get? How uncomfortable are you willing to get? Because it's the only thing in the way. It is the only thing in the way of you getting the result that you want. It's an action that it will include discomfort. So here's an example. I just taught a class for my membership group called Alpha State. Alpha State is where we put people in an alpha state of mind so they feel energized and focused and they know exactly what to do. They know how to delight their clients. 
Uh, I just taught a class inside of that group that was all about how to attract listings. All right. I think we would all agree that that's kind of a relevant deal right now. We would uh, like to have more listings. That'd be good for the market. It'd be good for us if we had more listings. So I help these people with, all right, guys, here's, here's 24, 24 ideas, 24 strategies that I know will work. Like, and I walk them through all 24, how to do it, what it would take, all the steps. Um, and, it, and I know people were, were bought in. And here's the thing, as, as people walk away from that class, like imagine if you, you were in that class and now you have a list of 24 things and you've just been taught how to do those things and what it's going to take and, and all the different ways. And you also know that none of them are unreasonable. None of them would risk your reputation. But you're sitting there with that list in front of you. And if you make the choice to not do any of those things, like imagine someone who they've had, they got the training, they now have the list. But if they make the choice not to do the thing that's on the list, it's only because of discomfort. It's only because of them saying, you know what? I don't think so. I don't really want to do that. I don't want to go through the discomfort of either number one, figuring the thing out, like actually doing the work is uncomfortable. And they also may say, you know, I don't want to experience the discomfort of putting myself out there, right? Of, of really like asking people uh, if they would like my help and asking people if they would like my information and like my newsletter and, and like to be updated on what their home is worth in today's market uh, without ever trying to like uh, manipulate them into selling their home. That again, that's not what this is about. But again, like you're sitting there with a list of 24 things in front of you and you're also wishing that you had more listings. Like, boy, it would sure be nice if I had more listings. And now you have a list of 24 things that you could do to attract more listings. Um, so, which now eliminates any thought of, well, I don't know what to do. Uh, sure, we're going to have more listings, but I don't know what to do. But now, now that's gone away. Now you know exactly what, what you could do. And you don't have to do all 24. You just have to do maybe three or four of them. But if you choose not to do it, it's only because of discomfort. So if you right now uh, are not getting what you want, not getting the results that you want, I would argue, I would bet you, it would be interesting to look at, is it because of discomfort? Is it because of an unwillingness to get uncomfortable? So back to the question, how uncomfortable are you willing to get? How uncomfortable are you willing to get? Are you willing to put yourself out there? Are you willing to do, do the work, to figure it out, to go face something that you've never faced before? Um, go experiment, go test, go fail, right? Are you willing to live through the, the discomfort of something not working? Okay, that is the question. How uncomfortable are you willing to get? And there's really two questions that live like right underneath that. And I think these questions will help you as you kind of process through the question that I keep asking you here. So here are the, the other two questions to really consider. Uh, and these are simple questions. What's the worst that could happen? All right, so what's the worst that could happen? As you go give it your best toward, I mean, let's pretend you're looking at that list of 24 things. Like if you're like, all right, I'm going to, here's one, I'm going to, I'm all in. I'm going to go for it on this one. What's the worst that could happen if I really go for it on this one? And really think that through, like, what is the worst that could happen? The worst that could happen most likely is that it just didn't work. All right. The worst that could happen is you may hear no, but not in a disrespectful way, not in a way that like ruin, ruins the relationship, uh, or in a way that ruins your reputation, you know, so really think through, okay, so what, what is the worst that could happen? So the worst that could happen is I put myself out there. I hear no, uh, it doesn't work. And the worst that could, worst that happens is now I'm, I'm back to the drawing board or the worst that happens is I'm going to just go try again. I mean, that's the worst that could happen. And, and then also ask, and this is the second question that's really fun to ask. Also ask what's the best that could happen? Right. What is the best thing that could happen? Like if I really went all in on this thing, uh, this idea that Eric gave me, that this idea that's sitting here on this list, like if, if I really went all in on this and I know like I know what it would take, I know what to do. Uh, and if I really went for it, what's the best that could happen? Oh, my gosh. The best that could happen is I have a listing. The best that could happen is I go really delight a client. The best that could happen is I generate a referral. The best that could happen is I build up a whole bunch of goodwill. The best that could happen is I make my reputation as a helpful professional even better. That's the best that could happen. So that, that that's a fun little exercise. Like, whoa, the best that could happen 
way outweighs the worst that could happen. Like I'm okay with the worst and I'm certainly okay with the best. So are you okay with the worst? Are you okay with the best? And then the last thing I'll share with you here is that you must agree that even if it doesn't work, you're not going to give yourself a hard time, right? You have to agree that it won't make it mean that you're a bad person, right? You have to agree that you won't define this as something that creates a shortfall for you, all right? So bottom line, what I mean is you're not going to harass yourself. You're not going to make it mean that you're an awful bad um, um, dysfunctional person. You're not going to make it mean that if it doesn't work. You have to agree on that before you go for it. So you guys, how uncomfortable are you willing to get? How uncomfortable are you willing to get in pursuit of the things that you want to do? How uncomfortable? Just go get uncomfortable. Go do it. You can totally do it because the worst that could happen ain't so bad. You can live through the worst. You're not risking your life. You're not risking your reputation. You can for sure live through the worst. All right, you guys, that's it. That's this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. You need to go check out Alpha State. Uh, you need to get on in there because we're doing some really amazing stuff. I'm really helping people in there. Like people are getting results. They're having more clients and more success and they feel better. They feel focused and energized and on track. It's the thing to do. It's the place to be. If you want to get connected with a bunch of like-minded people like you, go sign up alphastateclass.com. Alphastateclass.com is where you get signed up. And you guys have an amazing day. So look forward to seeing you on the next podcast. In the meantime, enjoy life on the leading edge. Bye.